barbecue? This week we got a messy house and you got to clean up the barbecue. How many of y'all like guests up in your house after they, they have left that you got to clean up? Anybody like that part of it? No, I didn't get any takers. I was going to see if y'all want to come and clean up my house if that was the ticket. So last week we talked about uh, uh, a barbecue. Who do you have at your table? How many of y'all were blessed by that sermon? Right, And so uh, we talked about everyone is welcome to the barbecue. Everyone is welcome to the table, but not everyone can stay at the table. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? And so there are some people that are around you that are not for you. How many of you believe that? Right? There are some people that will come around you, and all they are there for is to try to, uh, they have their own agenda, their own way of doing things, and they're like vampires. They are real-life vampires in our time. Y'all know that, right? And they will suck the life out of you. You you ever get around people you're just tired afterwards? You know, right? We don't want those people to stay around our table. And then there's people that are decoys, and they're, they're there to affect your destiny. They just want to block you from what God is trying to do in your life. And as long as you're giving them all of your time and attention, you're not giving your destiny time and attention. And so it's important, and I know, I know, I know, the Christian thing is turn the other cheek. How many of you guys have said that, right? And give off the shirt. Give the shirt off of your show. If they want it, take it. And I know we got to be good, good Christians. And we do, and I am. Y'all believe that, right? But we have to do all of what the Word tells us to do without us making ourselves vulnerable to what the devil is trying to do in your life. Because we are in a fight. The Bible says that we are in a spiritual battle. Have you ever heard that before? And so a fight is not get slapped and walk away. <clears throat> y'all, y'all the pastors don't normally talk like this. Like, just turn the other cheek, saints, and just keep it moving. No! Listen, we are in a battle. And if the devil's going to swing at me, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to swing back. Because we are in a battle. This is warfare. And I'm not going to make myself vulnerable to the attacks of the enemy. I'm not going to make my family vulnerable to the attacks of the enemy. I'm going to fight. Because that is what it requires from me. In fact, there are some people that have been a part of this ministry for a long time. And, uh, and they came from a, a, a lifestyle of addiction. And they broke their addiction in this ministry. And they had a relapse. And so, and so, you know, we could do the good Christian thing and just say, church, we just got to pray for so-and-so while they go through the mess that they're going through. You know what I did? I did pray for them, but I wound up at the high, at the house, too, messing up their high. <laughs> You're going to be high with pastor right next to you. <laughs> like, you enjoying your high? Nope. <laughs> good, I'll be back tomorrow. <laughs> Why? Because it's a battle, and we fought really hard to get him out from playing on Satan's team, and now that he's on this side, you think I'm going to let him go back to the other side? Sometimes you just got to, my wife says this, this I'm going to coin her, her phrase, sometimes you just got to love the hell out of people, and that requires you to fight back. And so everyone is welcome to the table. But act crazy if you want to, you won't lose, you'll lose access to being at my table. Why? Because we got to fight. This is a warfare. We're in a battle. And it's not a flesh and blood. I realize that. It's a powers and principalities. But we have to have that war mindset. Otherwise, we make ourselves so vulnerable to the devil. And all we'll begin to do is just struggle through life and struggle through anxiety and struggle through depression and struggle through hurt and struggle through offense. And every time we turn around, we're struggling through, through something. I don't know about you, but I'm tired of the struggle. I want to win. Anybody else want to win? And so we have to ensure that we are protectors of what God puts right in front of us. We got to protect it. So today we're talking about cleaning the house. How many of y'all like to clean your house? Good. Can you come and help me with mine? See, my kids and my household... They, uh, they define cleaning the house a little bit differently than I do. 
right? I, I was in the military for 13 years, and so when it's time to clean up, I pull out the white glove, and I'm like, listen, we got to clean up the house, and we got to continue to clean until the job is done. My kids start, and they get distracted and wind up doing all these other things, and so I got to reel them back in, reel them back in, right? And they're like, Dad, we're not in the military anymore. And they tell me they do. And, um, but my kids have gotten really, really smart. And so they go up and they, they clean their room and, and, and they clean it up and, and all of the area that I'm going to go up and see is clean until I get to under the bed and the closet. And so they clean all of the visible areas and they hide it in the areas that are not so. Come on, parents, you find your kids doing that? If you're young, how many of y'all do that in here? Y'all just told on yourself. You just told on yourself. <laughs> he just told on yourself. And so I go in there, and I'm, I'm like, aha. I, you know, I'm already going in there. I'm looking for stuff. I know stuff is hot in places. And they even get a little slick. They pull the mattress out a little bit, and they pin the clothes against the wall so that it doesn't quite hit the floor. <laughs> but I got them, though. I got them. I got their number. But I realized something. I had an aha moment as I was inspecting their room and understanding this whole cleaning the house process. I realized that church folks and unchurched folks, this is how church folks are. Let me clean up the visible areas so that when everybody looks on in, they don't see the mess. Yeah. See, unchurched folks don't care. You can look at my, it's my social media page and it's free. So don't tell me what I, I should post and I shouldn't post. See, but we get in the church house and then we get smart and we stop posting the mess. And we only post all the... <laughs> and we've learned how to hide really well the things that we don't necessarily want to clean up. We just don't want others to see. But the problem is, is that when we hide things and we don't clean up completely, we still allow the devil to have a room in our house. But we don't want to deal with this stuff. We just want him to come on over. We have to get to a place of if we're going to clean house, we might as well just clean up the entire house. If we're going to do it, just might as well do it right. Because again, listen, I, I've gotten to a place of realizing we are in the 10th month of the year. Folks are really tired and they can't wait for 2022. Some folks are over 2021, just tired of dealing with it. And it seems like every year folks think that 20, the next year that's coming is going to be better than the last year. And then, and then the new year, and you were like, well, last year was better than this year. And I hope that the and we are in this cycle, and, and here's the deal. We have to become more calculated as to how we make decisions. We are not calculated anymore in our decision-making. We've become cloudy in the way that we make decisions. When you're tired, that's probably the best place that you should be in because you stop relying on you and relying on the thing that can actually help you out. See, when I trained in uh, martial arts, jiu-jitsu, and judo, and all of that stuff, I know I, I, know I look swole and buff, y'all. I look like I, I'm, a, I'm a good UFC fighter, don't I? Y'all laughing with me or at me? Yeah. And so I realized that, that at first, I was relying on what I think I knew, what I thought I knew. And I would muscle my way around and try to push and pull and uh, even the grunting uh, and all of that stuff. And, and then I'll get tired really fast. And no longer was I trying to muscle my way around. Every move had to be calculated because then I was exerting energy that I did not have. And I, and, and I had to actually go into a defense because I didn't want to get into a chokehold or an arm bar or a leg lock because it was going to hurt a lot and my pride doesn't allow me to tap so quickly. And so next thing you know, I would be asleep. I can, I can say with a good conscience that no one has ever put me to sleep. Hallelujah. Because I've always tapped before. And so... <laughs> And so, that's Jesus on the main line. And so, 
Uh, and so when we get to a place where we are completely tired, like some of you are right now, you're so tired that your moves become more calculated and you are actually doing things that you need to do rather than the things that you want to do. And it's so important, and I don't know who this is for. I don't know who's tired in this place. I don't know who is worn out at this moment. But you got to begin to rest on the resources that will actually help you because the things that you have been resting on will only get you more tired. See, some of us, when we have money in our pocket, we just go to the store and get whatever we want to. How many of y'all like eating out a whole lot? I got my hand raised up as well. See, when we got it, we just go and get it, right? Where are we going to eat at? Oh, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to, what's your favorite restaurant? TGI Fridays. Uh, uh, I'm not going to give any ad, free advertisement to anybody else. And so, and so you just go to wherever you want to. But when you only got $5, you're like, um, uh, where, who got a good dollar menu? <laughs> right? Who got a good dollar menu so I could go get some on the low low and feed all five of us, right? And so <laughs> we become more calculated, right, whenever you have less. And so we're at a place right now where your decision making needs to become more calculated because if you rely on the things that really won't help you, you will waste more time, more energy, and more resources. And so we just got to begin to clean up house. This is where the Bible took me, where the Lord took me at in the Bible. First Peter chapter 2 verses 1 through 3. It says, for this is the King James Version. I'm going to read to you two versions. The King James Version, it says, Therefore, rid yourselves of all malice and all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and slander of every kind. Like newborn babies, crave pure spiritual milk so that by it you may grow up in your salvation now that you have tasted that the Lord is good. How many of y'all have tasted that the Lord is good? He is good. This is what the... The message version says, starting of verse 1 and all through 3, it says, So clean house. Somebody say, clean your house. Make a clean sweep of malice and pretense, envy and hurtful talk. You've had a taste of God. Now like infants at the breast, drink deep of God's pure kindness. Then you'll grow up mature and whole in God. And so the Apostle Peter is the author of this book, and he's exhorting the people, and he's telling them, listen, it's time for you to clean up house and get rid of the things that are no good for you. Now, some of us don't like to get rid of a whole lot of stuff. We are kind of like spiritual hoarders. At some point, we feel like we're going to use it again. But there's some things that you cannot just put away somewhere until you may need it again or as a reminder of where you used to be. See, some memories are just not good to keep along. And so we must get rid of some things, get it up out from your company. Otherwise, it may trigger you to go right back to what that thing was. The Bible says that we should not be like dogs that return back to our vomit. Because so often we open the door to the things that we've shut so long ago. And some of us, if we go back to the way that it used to be, you might not make it out again. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Some of y'all were around the wrong people doing the wrong things with the wrong stuff in your system. And the reality is, is that if you go back to that, you may not make it out alive again. You are fortunate to be here right now. What Pastor G, you're talking about luck. Yeah, the Bible does talk about fortune. You ought to consider yourself fortunate that the Lord allowed you to go through that and still be on this side. And so now it puts a responsibility on us. And so I have some things, I have some trash bags of things that we need to clean up in our homes, in our lives, on this spiritual journey. The first one is, is cleaning up ungodly practices. There, we are really, really good, y'all at taking stuff that has nothing to do with the spiritual realm and spiritualize it. Like, I had some friends that they will hold their breath when we drove by cemeteries. And it was, this was a long cemetery, and they're like... <clears throat> I'm like, what's wrong with you? I'm holding my breath. Why? And then afterwards, they were like, my mom and dad said that when I'm driving past a cemetery, I cannot breathe because it'll give me bad luck. And I'm like, stupid. 
So I'm just one of those people that I'm going to be like, why do y'all do that? I asked the mom and dad, and they were like, they just talk too much in the car. So I told them to hold their breath, said, shut up for a little while. <laughs> we spiritualize things that have nothing to do with the spiritual realm. It's like a religiosity. Like we, It has no relationship to God, but for some reason, we begin to spiritualize this thing and try to act like we're, we know it. You didn't, you didn't even Google it. You know, there's no reference. You just pulled that out of somewhere and just ran with it and then handed it down to your children. There's some things that we, see, here's the deal. The longer that you hold on to the things that have no spiritual value, it deafens you to what does have spiritual value, and you can't hear God. Why? Because you're listening to the devil. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14 says, But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. See, there are the things of God that we call foolery. And then there are some things that are like, why in the world do you believe of that stuff or in that stuff? And we hold on to it, and we just, I've seen people lose on relationships, lose out on relationships, because they're just holding on to something that has no value. And so we create these layers, these trash bags full of trash in our lives. And I want to tell you that the answer is not in the stars. <laughs> I knew that it would get really quiet. The answer is not in the stars. See, some of us will read a horoscope and then start acting that thing out. Well, my horoscope said it's Pisces season and it's a Gemini. And you start believing the things that you've read in it and you don't listen to what God has already spoken in your life. Why? Because it's Gemini season. And this is what my horoscope says. The answer is not in the stars, but in who created the stars. I'm just going to burn some sage so that I can clean my house from all unclean spirits. No incense and no sage is going to clean your house from any spiritual. It'll make it smell good. And actually, it does purify the natural air. But there's only one thing that could clean your house from all spiritual battle. And there's nothing that is natural. See, we begin to grab onto ungodly practices that, and, and, and we empower those things and we hand that down from generation to generation. But it's time for you to clean up shop. How do I know we hand it down from generation to generation? It's going to get a little tight right now. Maybe a little bit more than it already has. So y'all get ready to just take a deep breath and... And relax just a little bit. And just hold your breath until the service is over. <laughs> it's not in the crystal balls. It's not in tarot cards. See, we do things that actually keep us in bondage. And we pass this down to our kids. How do I know? In a couple of weeks, y'all about to start dressing your kids up. And you're going to prophesy, isn't he a cute little devil? Come here, you cute little hot serial killer. Come on. Oh, my baby is such a cute little serial killer. Isn't he cute? Oh, this is my, my baby. He... He torments people in their dreams. Isn't he cute? <laughs> Are you still holding your breath? <laughs> but here's the deal. Here's the deal. I'm going to bring this home. I promise you. We believe that we can speak blessings into existence. Do we or do we not? Yes. How many of us, Lord, I'm calling forth healing over my life. I declare it in Jesus' name. How many of y'all have ever said that? I'm declaring, Lord, I need a new car, God. Bring it. I'm, 
This year, 2022, I'm buying my first house. I'm buying five. I already heard it. The prophet spoke it. Well, if you could speak a blessing over your life, do you think that you could speak a curse over your life? Now, I'm not trying to be facetious. I'm just bringing, I'm just bringing the Bible to life because these are things that we allow into our life, and we want God, but we also live a, a, like, like the devil. We got to get to a place of knowing the practices that we practice. They're either godly or ungodly. Do a little bit of research. I promise you that there's some stuff that y'all do that you probably wouldn't do anymore. I promise you. I had a friend that every Thanksgiving, they would, uh, they would cut the butt off of the turkey, the, 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 the ham, excuse me, the ham. And I'm like, why do y'all do that? That thing is good right there. I'll take it home, give it to me. It was a nice little chunk. I'm like, why do y'all do that? He was like, I don't know. It's just a family tradition. We just cut the butt off of the ham, and we just put that bad boy in there. And it was good, whatever they cooked up, but that ham was good. I took it home, and I was bold. You know, I'm just bold like that. And I said, why do y'all do that? I asked the mom, and she was like, because uh, when we were younger in, in, our, in life, we didn't have the finances to buy a bigger pot, so we had to cut the ham to fit the pot. They turned it into a family tradition and nobody else knew why they did it anymore it just became something that they did moving forward and we are much the same why do you do some of the things that you do and we have no idea but you should probably figure it out you probably just should just figure it out because we all have a way but there's the way and if we could just stick to the book, I promise you that, that some things will begin to turn around in our life. We will begin to rest on the one that can actually bring hope and, and life to our future. And, and, and that, that we can stand on the promise that the best is yet to come. If we can believe that we are on team Jesus and, and he is for us and we are for him, then we can actually get rid of some of the turmoil in our life. See, some of the turmoil in, the, in your life is not other people, it's you. Some of y'all got rid of the folks that brought the turmoil in your life long ago. But you're still all in your head. Another thing that we need to clean up in our life is uh, generational curses. Genesis chapter 22 verse 18. In your seed, all of the generations of the earth shall be blessed. Because you have obeyed the voice. So if my generations will be blessed because I obeyed the voice, then what do you think will happen to the generations if I disobey the voice? So some of y'all don't know why that y'all just can't act right. And that ain't even your fault. How many of y'all some areas you do what you don't want to do? And some of y'all can't get rid of that lust and can't get rid of some of the depression and we have all of this baggage and that ain't even your fault and they say that generation uh, uh, depression is something that could be passed down to the generations and mental health and all of these issues and, and the perversion how about addiction I just have an addictive personality you know why you didn't just wake up one day and, and, and it was yours. It was passed down to you. Now you have all power and authority to begin to clean up shop and break some of those generational curses. Those things you can't understand, it's time for you to begin to say, listen, it ain't mine to begin with. I didn't want, I didn't want to start it, so I'm going to be the one to let go. Well, it's all good. I just have anger issues. No, it was passed down. You didn't pick that up somewhere. You have this emotional way about you because somebody before you dealt with that thing and picked it up. And, and now you don't know what you don't know. You just act like what's in your bloodline. But you got to begin to clean up shop. Begin to clean up shop. And then another one that we have to clean up is soul ties this is a tougher one because we want to hold on to the love letters and we want to hold on to the jewelry that was given
And it, it was a gift. I know that it looks creepy and it looks like it's scared, staring at me and the area is rumbling all the time. And, and it ain't nothing right about that thing. I know the devil lives in that, but it's so cute. And you bring everybody to it. Look, look at how cute. Philippians chapter, nope, uh, 1 Samuel chapter 18 verse 1 says, Now when he had finished speaking to Saul, the soul of Jonathan was knit to the soul of David, and Jonathan loved him as his own soul. You got to be careful who you say, we're, we're roll dogs, I ride or die. Because there's some folks that are, that are ride with you, but they ain't going to die with you. And so we, we have these layers of, of things, of love letters. That was my boo. I remember that. Ooh, we used to have a good old time. When y'all were together, you had nothing to do but complain about them. And all of a sudden, you want to hold on to And you want to hold on to the memory of that? Okay. <laughs> Listen. I don't know if we have fire insurance. So when you burn it, don't burn it here. Take it home with you. And so we hold on to these things, right? We try to, we try to hold on to these, to these memories that actually wound up spiraling you and taking you to a place that you hated in a season of your life. We got to get rid of these soul ties. My daughter who... Uh, most of you know Ashley, she was up here singing, playing the keyboard. Uh, we, you know, we were so, so blessed in that uh, she's a thrifter, you know. Um, yeah, how many of y'all know that clothes with holes in it now cost more than stuff that doesn't have any holes? I don't understand it. I like it, uh, but I don't, I don't understand that now I got to pay more money for less material. And so she has always been a thrifter, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. That sounds amazing to a parent's pocket, right? But then she started to buy some jewelry from those places and began to realize that there was, seemed to be like some stuff that was attached to the things that she was bringing into the home and realized, oh, I got to get rid of this. And, and, and she was starting to have some nightmares with some of the things that were in her room. And, and, and she wasn't having it until she brought those things into the house. We got rid of it and she slept like a baby. See, we got to be cautious what we bring into our homes. Because the enemy will try to sneak in on anything. Try to sneak in on anything. See, these soul ties is if the devil can bring in a, a decoy and have you tied up with the wrong thing, then you are too occupied to pay attention to the right thing. To the right thing. How about how about cleaning up? Are you ready for this one? You sure? Are you ready? I don't know if you're ready. Are you ready? Are you sure? Okay, here we go. Cleaning up your self-sabotaging ways. See, we have two types of people. There's a type of people that sabotage themselves from actually succeeding. And then there's the people that are afraid to do anything and sabotage themselves from starting because they're afraid to fail. See, the fear of succeeding means that now it puts more of a responsibility on you and you can't just do all that you want to do. You realize that if you succeed, it's going to take, you, it's going to take more of your time, more of your energy, more of your uh, effort. And so you're like, I don't want to progress because, because it's going to take more. I just want to sit where I'm at because I am comfortable. So you sabotage yourself and that could be from business. Uh, it could be from a job that you apply for. Or how about this? You don't try a new relationship because of all of the past relationships and we sabotage ourselves Philippians chapter 4 verse 9 says the things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me these do and the God of peace will be with you in other words trust God all you have to do is just trust God. 
It doesn't say believe in yourself and do it. Does it say that? It doesn't say believe that you could do all things and then God will come and step into the mix. The reality is, is that you're at a better place if you feel like you can't, but are willing to allow God to change your can't into a can. But we begin by just cleaning house. Not hide it. Not try to figure it out. Here, let me help you out. I realize that my trash is in your way. Ain't our trash in people's way sometimes? Even in your own way? Come on. That'll preach all day. See, we can't just hide our mess. Well, Pastor G, it's so easy for you to say, hogwash. Last time I realized, I was flesh and bone, flesh and bone. And God has just called me to be on this side of the microphone in this season. But like you, I have generational curses that I got to come constantly break from my life. And I have to un- uh, make sure that I don't operate under ungodly practices. How many of y'all know, pastors, we could, we could just make up some stuff now and tie God to it. We could find a sermon in anything. And self-sabotaging ways, just we, we, we have to get to a place of not trying to believe that you can do it. But believe that he can do it. And God just wants us to just clean up shop. Sometimes cleaning up means that you got to take stuff out of the closet. And people are going to see it. You know, if you clean up your trash around the right people, the devil, God is not into wanting to expose you, to embarrass you. What would it benefit him? Or benefit the kingdom of heaven? And so I realize that all of us in here probably have some cleaning up to do. In fact, here we go. I'm just, I'm going to grab the first trash bag. And I make the first commitment and say, I'm going to clean up shop. Anybody else bold enough to come up here and grab a trash bag? And say, I'm going to clean it up. The generational curses, the soul ties. I I need to do away with it all. I'm I'm tired of self-sabotage. And I'm tired of of making the excuses. But I'm willing today to clean it up. It doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to do it all by yourself. It just means that you're going to make an effort. Well, I don't want anybody to see me because they're going to know that I'm going through stuff. Newsflash, 100% of everyone in this place could use some cleaning up. The difference is willingness. Hallelujah, God. Thank you, Jesus. He was going to take the whole box. He said, This is for your spiritual life, not your house. (laughs) Thank you, sir. (laughs) Hallelujah, God. Thank you, Lord. Hey, you need help with that. Let me help you out. You got it. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, God. Thank you, Lord. Sometimes all it requires is just the first step. Sometimes all it requires is just the first step. You're not going to get it right 100% of the times. 
and you may clean up some areas of your life. But I always live by this particular phrase. 10% of something is so much better than 100% of nothing. And, and I may not be where I want to be. Anybody else where they want to be? <laughs> but you're on your way. Hey, I'm willing to give up my bag if I need to. If we can stand on the promise, saints. Yeah, you can stand at your place. If we can stand on the promise that we're not where we want to be, but we're not where we used to be. And every day you're taking a step forward towards what God has for you. How many of you have been hurt before? I pray healing over you right now in the name of Jesus. How many of y'all have some generational curses that you got to break? I declare they be broken in the name of Jesus. The list can go on and on and on and on, but you have to declare it over your life in Jesus' name. Catherine, would you come on up here really quick? Is there anyone here today that would like to, make a, like to make a decision to follow Jesus? You've never accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life, but today you'd like to make that decision. Is there anyone that would like to make that decision today? I see that hand right there. Thank you so much, man. Is there anyone else that would say, I want to make Jesus Lord and Savior of my life? If that's you, just slip up your hand right where you are. Is there anyone else? Let's just repeat together. Dear Jesus, today I accept you as Lord and Savior of my life. I ask that you forgive me of my sins and doing things my own way. Today I will try them your way. In the name of Jesus. Guys, thank you so much for being a part of our service on today. Listen, if you have any prayer needs, we would love to pray with you. So send them on over. Our hope and desire is that the message was an impact to you and your children and your entire household. We take our motto here seriously. Why do life alone? Listen, there's no reason why you should do life alone. So come and be a part of do us. Let's do life together. <laughs>